What's up, everybody? I'm Jonathan, and this is Worship Matters. Today, I'm going to get myself in trouble. <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, hopefully not. <laughs> Today, we're going to be uh, reviewing a song called We Will Feast in the House of Zion. It's quite a, quite a, uh, a long title. I'm just going to call it We Will Feast by Sandra McCracken. I think she is now... This is apparently an old song. It's like six years old. Old. Old for worship music. Um, so apparently she does some stuff with the Gettys now. Um, but uh, this is a song my my church sings on Sunday. So uh, <laughs> that's why I said I was going to get in trouble. But uh, no song is safe. No song is safe. Um, also, I have criticisms of it. So I do know the song. <laughs> I was like, we're, we're going to have to talk about this song. <laughs> so, let's jump into it. <laughs> Okay, first, here's our worship uh, guidelines. <clears throat> Directional, musically repeatable, theologically sound, the Bob test, artistic license, and congregational versus personal. So, if you don't know what that means, I did a whole video on it. Link will be in the description. You can go check that out. But basically, these are how, these are the, the guidelines that I use to help determine what should and shouldn't be sung congregationally or even personally for worship. All right, let's jump into it. Oh, and I did not do this. One of these days, I'll actually remember to do everything I'm supposed to do. Uh, there we go. <laughs> All right, there we go. Let's do this thing. That did not do what I wanted it to do. There's a lot of instrumental, so I might cut some of that out for the sake of time. the chorus. Alright, that's the chorus. Alright. We will feast in the house of Zion we will sing with our hearts restored. Um, so this is sort of prophetic. Um, so we're kind of declaring what's going to happen in the future. Because, I mean, the Bible does that. <clears throat> Declares what's going to happen. So we're, we, um, we being, I assume, believers, those gathered in the church. So this is... <clears throat> aiming for church worship, I assume. Uh, maybe I'm reading into that, but um, we'll feast in the house of Zion. Okay, so obviously the house of Zion, I believe, is referring to heaven. Uh, so, yeah, because I mean, yeah. So I think I'm pretty sure that's what what the proper interpretation of this is. So one day we will feast in. In the house of God, um, and we will, you know, all be together. <clears throat> so, uh, and we will sing with our hearts restored. Um, so both of these are true. One day we will feast in heaven with with uh, with everybody. Although, just. Uh, for my interpretation, I'm going to clarify, heaven will be on earth, because God will bring heaven to earth. So the new earth and the new heaven will be together, and that will be the house of Zion. We will dwell for eternity with God on the new earth, and uh, we will feast. <laughs> so there, uh, there, there will be a marriage supper table for Christ and his bride. Where we celebrate for eternity. Um, so we will feast. And we will sing. We will be singing. We will have resurrected bodies. And we will do it with our hearts restored. We will be have glorified bodies. And our sin natures will be truly destroyed. So we will be restored. So this is true. Uh, so I like this. Alright. And then the second part. He has done great things. We will say together. Um, so we're at the feast, we're singing, 
And what are we singing? We're, uh, we're saying together that he, meaning God, has done great things. So now this, again, I'm assuming the he and the we here. Uh, she hasn't said either yet. So, but this is just the intro. Um, but just to be fair, <laughs> I do have to, to say, we don't know who the he is. We don't know who the we are. Uh, just to clarify. So, um, who is this we? Who is the he? Uh, I'm interpreting it as the church and God. So we're saying God has done great things. Uh, but we'll have to see. Does she actually say that in the song? Um, will it pass the bob test? <laughs> and the we, I'm assuming uh, redeemed believers is the we, the church. All right, and then we will feast and weep no more. So we have the feasting again, but this, but this time the added clause, we will weep no more. So there will be no more crying. Um... I still think we'll we'll cry, just not in the same way. We won't, or for the same reasons. We won't weep. We'll cry, but we won't weep. So there won't be sadness. Sadness will be gone. But you know, crying for happy reasons is still gonna happen. We still have tear ducts. I think. Could be wrong, but let's let's keep going. All right, to the uh, verse one. into the chorus all right <clears throat> she could ha sing with a little more consistent vowels yes oh lord our god that's how she's singing he is the lord our god i know it's like a stylistic thing like you but the vowel like the vowel and tone could be could be the same through here but she's kind of doing this like wow kind of thing it's kind of kind of annoying but oh well it's the style <laughs> All right, we will not be burned. Ah, it's not. Oh, there we go. All right. We will not be burned by the fire. Okay, so this must be referring to now. <laughs> we will not, not as in like the future, but or in future eternity, but future now, we will not be burned by the fire. And the reason, I guess, he is the Lord our God. So first we have. God, the Lord, our God. Um, so, now we know who the He is. It's been declared. He is the Lord, our God, which does put us as the church. So, we have He and we have we. Um, so, this song, directionally, is folk talking to the audience. We will do this. He will do that. It's not directionally to God. It's directionally to the audience. Which, again... It's not necessarily a problem, um, but but I do wish like there was more directional like uh, worship toward God. So just keep that in mind. We are not consumed by the flood. Okay, I don't know what the flood is referring to um, because. Uh, the floods already happened, and we weren't consumed. <laughs> um, so maybe like the flood is just referring to God's judgment, or maybe it's. Uh, I guess if you're okay, if if we if we interpret "burned by the fire" and "consumed by the flood" as God's two judgments of Earth, then. Okay, okay, that makes sense. We have both of them here, fire and flood. So he sends the God sends the rainbow after the flood, after he's destroyed the earth. Um, and he sends the rainbow saying, I will not bring my wrath about by water again. <clears throat> okay. And so, but he then promises later that he will 
destroy the earth by fire. So we, as the church, will not be burned by the fire. So I think this is a good way of uh, of, talk, of talking about it. So we have like this God's wrath being poured out on the on his enemies, his judgment coming forth. Uh, and so we, as the church, believers, we will not be burned by the fire, and we are not consumed by the flood. So I think that that's why. But rather, we are upheld, protected, and gathered up. So I think this is a good verse. I think it's pretty good. So um, we have... We're not destroyed. We're not consumed by God's judgment, or we will not be, uh, because Christ has taken our judgment for us. He's taking taken the wrath of God on, you know, on our behalf. So believers, we, the church, will not be uh, destroyed. So I guess you could say so far that we might is a bit too broad. Um, theologically, I'm, I am going to apply it to the church. But theoretically, she could be talking about just everybody. Um, I don't think that's the case, but I'm just saying. She hasn't actually said who the, who the we are yet. But I'm assuming it's the church. So we kind of have a not-quite-Bob test, because Bob test usually is referring to God. Uh, but we'll, we'll keep going. We'll see if she explains the we, or if that's kind of a weak point of the song. Anyways, I think this verse is fun, so let's keep going. All right, then we have the chorus again. All right, so I do like the contrast. We have, we will not be consumed in judgment, uh, because Christ, although I wish it, she had said, uh, something like that, maybe she will, um, so we will not the church will not be consumed in judgment rather we will feast so i think there's a nice contrast there between verse one and the chorus which is immediately before and after this verse all right verse two here we go into the chorus okay so in the dark of night before the dawn so i think that this is referring to the chorus we will feast the judgment is coming but before that we're in the dark of the night before the dawn my soul be not afraid so now she's turning to herself uh, or the singers we we turn to ourselves hey be not afraid why for the promised morning oh how long <laughs> this is like the weirdest thing so far like i don't get i don't get this oh how long um but then we have oh god of jacob be my strength uh so I, I don't mind this. Um, so in the darkest night, so in the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? For you are with me. Um, I might have preferred it that <clears throat> that way, but that's all right. She's mixing a bunch of different ideas here. So my soul, be not afraid. Uh, when are we not being afraid? What, in in the darkest night before the dawn. So before this time of, of us feasting, we need where she's uh she's crying out do not be afraid old soul which is very uh psalm like there's other psalms that are are like that so and the reason is for the promised morning she doesn't really explain that she just says oh how long <laughs> um like I, I feel like you need like an explanation of for the promised morning something uh for the promised morning is coming uh or we, I don't know, like, this this line here does not make much sense. Like, I, I, I guess we could chalk it up to artistic license. Um, I just don't like chopped up sentences. 
Like, is that really artistic? <sighs> like, everything makes up sense up to here. My soul be not afraid for the promised morning is coming. But you put, oh, how long? What do you mean by that? Are you talking about, like, it doesn't make sense. You wouldn't say, uh, but hey, like, let's say your child's uh, afraid of something. Well, um, maybe it's because their father is out of the house. You're like, don't be afraid for in the morning. How long? <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> no, you say, in the morning, the dad's coming home. <laughs> like, <laughs> That's a complete sentence. <laughs> ah! um, you could say, oh, here we go. Be, my soul, be not afraid. For in the promised morning, Christ will come. Now we have something to look forward to. Isn't that like our goal? Like looking forward to something? This This is a bad... A bad phrase here. For the promised morning, oh, how long. It's that's so bad. Okay. The rest of the song has been okay so far, so I'm not going to say... <laughs> I don't know if that's a deal breaker, but it is, like, just some bad writing here. Um, that's okay. It doesn't have to be a perfect song. I still I still like the rest of this verse. So we, we've kind of gone... Um, talking about the future where we're in heaven... And then we talk about the destruction and how the church will escape its destruction, assuming that's who we're talking about. And then we're talking about even before that, in the in the now, in the here and now, in the dark night, and before the dawn, before this great morning uh, where uh, God returns and sets all things right. Before that, we're calling on ourselves to not be afraid. Why? Because there's a promised morning coming. Oh, how long? <laughs> And then where do we turn? Oh, God of Jacob, be my strength. So everything else about this is great except for this. This one line just is it's not good. All right, let's keep going. So that's verse 2. And then we, then we're, what, we're, what are we looking forward to? Feasting in the house of Zion. Feasting with God. The marriage supper. All right, there's like an interlude or whatever. And then we get to verse 3. So, so far... It's been a decent song. Let's keep going. Every vow we've broken and betrayed. You are the faithful one. And from the garden to the grave. Find us together. All right, I almost caught it. <laughs> All right, every vow we've broken and betrayed, you are the faithful one. And from the garden to the grave, bind us together, bring shalom. All right. So this this is very disjointed, I think. All right, so we have every vow we've broken and betrayed. Well, what about that? <laughs> you don't finish that sentence. <laughs> um, you just go, you are the faithful one. I think the idea is supposed to be that God is faithful where we aren't faithful, but she doesn't say that. <laughs> um, what is that? How does that work? <laughs> what do you mean? Well, yes, you are. God is the faithful one, but... But how does that relate to every vow we've broken and betrayed? You don't explain it. You could say, you are faithful when I am not. And that would explain it all. It's that easy. And then we have, and from the garden to the grave. And we kind of have like this uh, talk about Jesus, even though we haven't really said much about him. And then, bind us together, bring shalom, uh, which means peace. Uh I don't know why people don't just say peace. I realize that it rhymes with one, but okay. Um, <laughs> shalom just isn't that common of a word. But I guess maybe we should make it common. I don't know. I don't know. I think peace works just fine. 
uh, for for English. Anyways, I'm not going to talk about that right now. I'm not hating on the song because it uses the word shalom. I just think it's awkward to use. Um, uh, and again, maybe that's because maybe maybe we should start using. I don't know. I, it, I don't. I think peace is fine. All right. But what does in from the garden to the grave have to do with binding us together and bringing peace? Um, I assume, like, if I'm bringing interpretive glasses um, <laughs> and making assumptions here, <laughs> that it's talking about the act of Christ dying for us and how that binds us together and brings peace to, and through that, Christ brought peace to the world. She doesn't say that. Like this, we have four different ideas here. These two are kind of connected. These are kind of connected, uh, but they're not like explicitly connected. Honestly, like I felt like this is just a really bad, uh, a really bad verse. Um, it's not clear on what it's saying. The others have been at least been mostly clear. Uh, verse one is good. I think verse one is excellent. Verse two is good. But it's got like one blaring problem, and then this one just doesn't make any sense at all. Like, I c I can put it together in my head, but uh, but I'm making assumptions because because she's not really saying anything here. She's just making random sentences. Every vow we've broken and betrayed. Okay, well what what about those vows? Well, you are the faithful one. Okay. I guess that makes sense. God is faithful when we are not. So I can sort of piece these two together. From the garden to the grave. What does that have to do with this? Does it have anything to do with this? Is is it talking about how Christ was faithful to go to the grave in our on our behalf? Maybe. I don't know. It doesn't really say anything about that. What is where what does binding us together mean? Are you talking about us as the church? Or us with Christ? Bind us together with Christ. I get the sort of get to bring peace with the grave because Christ is our peace. Although she doesn't actually say that. She doesn't say it. like here. She says God is the faithful one, but it doesn't say God is peace. <laughs> um, so I don't know. Like this, this, this verse really, I feel like brings this whole song down. So honestly, if you just cut this verse out, you'd probably be good. But I, I do like the idea of. Like, each verse, she's kind of going further back. Um, so, starts off in in the future. And then she goes back a little bit, talks about the judgment. And then she goes to the future. Then she goes back a little bit further and talks about us walking in the valley right now. And then she goes back to the future. So, we're always looking toward the future. And then she goes a little further back, I think was supposed to be talking about our sinful past. Um, and I think it would have been really beautiful to like talk about these vows that we've broken and how God was faithful and he sent Christ to the grave, to the cross, to bring us peace. And when, then what, what, what do we talk about with that peace? We talk about how we're going to feast in the house of Zion because of this peace that got, that has been brokered between God and man. But that's not what the song says. So it's like, you know... I feel like if this if this verse were rewritten, I feel like it would be a five star song. Well, if this verse and and oh how long were rewritten, I think this would be a five star song. But instead, I think it's like a three and a half. I think I'd give it a three and a half, maybe a maybe a four, maybe a four. There is a lot of good to the song. Uh, I haven't been ranking songs. So. <laughs> Anyways, let's hop over to our worship guidelines. All right. Directional. All right, so this isn't, this is indirectly praising God. Um, there is a couple crying out to God, like, oh, God of Jacob, be, uh, be my strength. Um, so, yeah, um, but it's really a message to the people, like, hey, you, we're going to feast. And I, I don't think that that's a problem. But it is a worship service. We are supposed to directly praise God. Um, so I do want us to, as a church to rethink what we're doing in worship. Because worship is directional by nature. It's, it is directional. Um, 
And so when we have uh, um, these, when we have songs that are directing toward the audience, I'm like the the direction's in the wrong place. And, and again, this isn't a criticism of the song. I think it's a great song uh, for the most part, other than those points that we already talked about. But I want us to rethink about the direction of our songs when we're writing. We're supposed to be giving glory and honor to God directly. <laughs> uh, so why can't we do that directly? I don't. I don't mind songs that do it indirectly, but I want more songs that do it directly. Like praise God from whom all bl uh, blessings come or flow. Uh, um, praise God. To God be the glory. Great things He has done. Like why can't we just direct our praise to him so um so yeah that's that's a little rant there all right so directional it's okay it's it's not it's not exactly where i would want it but it's it's okay um it's indirect praise of god there are a couple times where it is directed to god uh but it's not praise to god it's uh it's a prayer almost uh musically repeatable it's pretty easy i've played the song so I I think the uh um the slow methodical uh melody works really well for the song, so I think this is fine. Um theologically sound. Uh yeah, I think there's some good stuff in here. Um I I don't think there's anything untheological. <laughs> I wish she had said who the church was or who the we is. She never really does. She just kind of contrasts it to he. So we have God and we have us. Um, so us technically could be applied to anybody uh, that's singing it. But I, I think the proper interpretation would be the church. Uh, I just hope that, excuse me, that's what she means. So theologically sound, I think it's fine. I, um, my problem is some of the, the writing isn't on par for what I would want. The Bob test I think it's fine. She says the Lord our God. She calls him the God of Jacob. Uh, there's allusions to Christ uh, in the garden and the, uh, on the cross. So I think we're fine here. The Bob test really is applied to the we. We don't really know who the we is. Uh, <laughs> we're just assuming it's the church. All right, artistic license. Uh, I guess you could give the oh how long artistic license. I don't know. I don't know. Is it really artistic license to like just break up words and use meaningless sentences that are disconnected and disjointed? I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe that is art. I'm not really a big Picasso fan, but okay. Maybe some people are, and that's art. So we'll give it artistic license. I don't know about that third verse, though. That's a stretch. <laughs> All right. Congregational verse personal. Well, obviously my church sings this congregationally. <laughs> um, <laughs> so what do I say? <laughs> um, <clears throat> in a perfect world, I would sing songs that are more directionally focused than this song. I think this is fine for a church gathering or even a personal worship. Um, but I feel like if I'm going for my ideal here, um, I feel like congregational should be songs of of praise and glory to God, not just indirectly praising God. So um, I, I, I'm not going to hate your church or my church <laughs> for singing this song, although that third verse I might just drop uh, or re rewrite um, if I were the, the music leader. Um, so... I'm not going to hate a church for singing this. I think there's some good stuff in here. There's some good theology that's taught. So there, um, there is other things going on in congregational worship. I think there is like indirect praise of God, which is not nothing. So, um, you know, I think it's fine to sing. Um, but I do think as a church we should strive, church universal here, we should strive to, to write songs that are directly praising God and giving glory to God for uh, for who he is, for what he's done. Um, I think that, I feel like there could be a song that we write this in a way that uh, 
we're singing about feasting with God uh, and how gr and and giving glory to how great that I, that is and how great He is and you know I feel like um, as, as I do like the song I think especially verse one and two are, are really good. Uh, and the chorus, I really like the chorus. I think the chorus is the best part of the song. Um, um, but as far as, like, <clears throat> directly praising God, that's my biggest issue. Um, I think, I mean, the third verse is the biggest issue. But I want us to strive in the future for songs that are directly praising God. Uh, because God is worthy of our praise. God is worthy of the glory and the honor. Forever and ever, I'm in. We should be giving him that on sunday every week we should be directly praising god every week so let's let's do that <laughs> uh so we do live in a uh fallen world so we it, you know i think there's a measure of grace where god you know hears our our praise our inward praise so i don't i don't think he's gonna be disappointed in us for singing the wrong so singing this song so let me just clarify that but um so I have the, the ideal, which is what I want to strive for, songs that uh, directly praise God. And in, in the reality, I think this is a fine song to sing on, on Sunday. I mean, verse 3, I'd probably ex or rewrite. But I don't, I'm not the music minister in your church. So, you know, you do. You. <laughs> Let me know what you think. Do you disagree? Do you think this is a great song? Do you think verse 3 is the best song, uh, verse ever? Let me know in the comments. If you made it this far, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, if you're from my church, I'm sorry. <laughs> I had to do it. Um, I'm not going to hate singing this song in church. Uh, I do like the song. Um, I just feel like there's better songs that we could be singing. Um, so, anyways, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, give me a like. If you're new here, go ahead and subscribe. I do this all the time. Make fun of songs that I love um, and others that I don't love. <laughs> thanks for watching next time. Peace.